I bought this farm um, in 1999, but I had been interested in having my own family cow. And so I met some folks nearby who had jerseys, bought a Jersey cow and started milking her and realized really quickly that I had too much milk to drink and too much milk to fool around with, make cheese. And so I thought about making butter because at the time there were a lot of farmstead cheese makers. So that market seemed to be covered and there were more people getting into it, but nobody was making butter. I started making butter with Petra's milk. That was her name. And uh, I did that be by going online and buying some out of print books about butter making. And I also knew that I wanted to make cultured butter, which is uh, widely available in Europe, but at the time was not that available here. I was culturing the cream, her cream, and then whipping it up. And I tried lots of different techniques. And finally, I got something I liked. We were quickly turning into a little dairy farm. Um, and so that's really how it started. One cow at a time. <laughs> I realized that I was probably going to need to sell to a market that would buy more than just what I could sell at one store. That's when I contacted Thomas Keller and asked him if the French Laundry would be interested in trying the butter. I had just finished reading The Soul of the Chef by Michael Ruhlman and he, his story and the story of him starting the French Laundry was is basically about half of the book and it, he's just really inspiring and is also is really committed to working with farmers directly and getting to know them and getting to know their products so i thought well this could be a good fit i reached out to him and asked him if he would try it and he very generously said yes he called me the next day saying you know i don't really know who you are but this is chef keller could you call me and left me the french laundry number he, he called me back and said, you know, what are you doing? Who are you? How do you make this butter? I've never tasted butter like this. So he said, okay, just put it as much as you can make. At the time I had two cows. I think I was making, I don't know, 15 pounds a week in the box every week. I'll send you my FedEx number and the address and just send it to me. And that's, that's how it started. <laughs> butter is everything. It's the foundation of everything you make. So I knew that if it was good butter, he would like the butter. When people ask me why my butter is different, it's really because of the cows. And um, so most of the cows that are in the dairy industry are Holsteins, the black and white cows, because they make the most milk and farmers get paid based on how much milk they make. Jerseys are really the butter cow. Um, so the cows from the Channel Islands, which are Jerseys and Guernseys, have the highest uh, percent of butter fat in their milk. It's richer cream. Um, it also changes color with the seasons, which really lends um, the butter and the cream when you see it. Uh, you know, it's really special. So in the spring, it's like a lot of lush grasses, not a lot of legumes and clovers and things like that. The butter is very delicate, a little bit fragile, but, and I don't want to say it's grassy, but it's a really clean flavor. As the summer goes on, the grass is coming up. There's more legumes, there's more wild flowers. I think that it's not quite as delicate and it has a more herbal, grassy kind of flavor there and really bright yellow too. In the winter when they're just eating hay and maybe a little bit of grain, um, boy it really gets really high octane butter fat and you can leave the butter out all day on your kitchen counter and it might soften a little but not much. It still has a rich flavor but the fat is just very unctuous. So um, it's really it's really about the cows and they're also incredibly pretty 
And so if you're going to do all the work that's required of having cows and milking twice a day and doing all of that, you should like the cows you have. They have a lot of personality. I just think they're beautiful and their calves are beautiful and you know, they're, they're very special cows. The whole reason I decided to do it was not really about the butter. I mean, that was the byproduct for me of having the cows. I knew that if I got too big, I really wouldn't have, I wouldn't have time to carry the water out to the cow who can't get up. And I wouldn't have time to notice that somebody doesn't quite look right today. So what's going on? It's really easy when you get caught up in the chores of a farm to miss a lot of things. And the more cows you have, the more that can happen. I just like enjoying them. I like having time to put a halter on the little calves and walk them around. And because I feel like if I lose that, why, why keep doing it? Hi, baby girl. So she's a year old. And this is Dell, who is going to have her first baby. She's two. She's going to have her first baby next month. She's got a little udder, but she's never been milked before. Really? Yeah, no, she's she's getting ready. Wow. Yeah.